So you have all these goals. You have goals to reach for 2024, goals once 2025 starts. You're the person who always says, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make that happen every single time. But nothing ever happens. Everything always stays the same. Every year, everything stays the same. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because I wanted to talk to you about how you can actually set goals, the actual science, the mechanism behind goal setting that I applied that helps me consistently. That when I didn't apply, which was honestly like maybe a year or two ago, I felt like that person that constantly made promises to himself and to other people and always came short on those promises. See, when you're setting goals, when you're creating opportunities for yourself, when you're seeing specific targets you want to hit, most people focus on the end goal. They focus on the outcome. You're always focused on the outcome. I want to make $100,000 this year. I want to make $200,000 this year. I want to lose 50 pounds this year. I want to lose 60 pounds this year. Every single day you're saying the same thing. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. You're wanting to do everything, but what are you doing? Instead of focus on, focusing on the output, you don't focus on the input. The input is everything. What you actually do to receive that output. See, two would never be two if it wasn't for one plus one. You have to input one plus one to get to two. It's a very simple analogy, but most people don't do that. I'll tell you a quick story. So when I was in school, when I was in college, I would always have these lofty goals. I'd always see other people doing really big things and I'd always want to do those same things. And I'd always be the person who would say things. Now, I would get some of these things done, but I would have such lofty goals that I would always be behind. And I would always be depressed. I'd always be stressed out because I was always behind on these big, big goals. And I'd never figure out why I couldn't even scratch the surface of most of these goals until I figured out. And this might have been a year after. But a year after I graduated, I figured out that I was so goal oriented that I was not input oriented. So what did I start doing? I started with my top goal. So this is going to be the step. These are going to be the steps that I took that you can take to actually make sure that you achieve every single goal that you have set in place. And the cool part about this is, even if you set that long-term goal, you set that big goal for yourself, you can foolproof it by working backwards to make sure you can actually do the inputs every single day to achieve that goal. See, anybody can set a goal and say they wanna make a billion dollars in a year. Anybody can set that goal. But do you know the inputs that you need to do to actually achieve that? And is that actually possible at the capacity that you can move right now? Probably not. All right, you need a lot of leverage when it comes to making that much. Droves of leverage. So you have to understand the inputs and what it's going to take to do that so that you can be more realistic with yourself because I know everyone says set, realist, set unrealistic goals and go achieve it. I disagree. Set goals realistic based on your actual maximum input that you can produce. So this is what I did. I'll give you a great example. So. My first year I was out, I wanted to make about $85,000. It was a magic number that I wanted to do within the corporate environment. I was doing business development and sales for an IT software company, right? And we had quotas. And the cool thing that, that this job taught me was how to work backwards. If I wanted to make $85,000, each meeting that I set was $250 per meeting. Right. So I had to work backwards to understand how many of these meetings did I have to book and qualify to get to that eighty five thousand dollar mark. And that was not including bonuses. That was not including ramping up period. So I probably made more than that. But when it came to the actual like just purely off of the meetings, I was able to figure out what I needed to do every day to get there. So if I had to book. Let's say, okay, I wanted to make 85,000. Man, that's gonna be a crazy number for me to actually do the math with, but we're gonna try this, right? Maybe I might even use my phone to figure this out for you. Let's do the math, because I did the math on my phone, right? And you guys can actually do this math with me and know that I'm not the greatest person with quick math. So $85,000, what does that look like every month? Because we looked at that at, on a year perspective, right? So 85,000, that would be 85 divided by 12. That's $7,000 a month, right? And again, this is before taxes. I was always calculating before taxes. I didn't count the tax part, right? So we're going to count that. So 7,083. Now, divide that by four. What is that? And we're just doing this with, with just um, weight, or we're just doing this with, with, with 
money. We can do this with weight as well after. That can be another example. So that means $1,770 per week was what I needed to make coming out of college, my first job out of college, right? To get to that $85,000 mark. Now, what does that look like every day? So divide 1,700, 1,770 by seven, or actually by five, because I had five working days, right? That's $354 a day. So that means I would need to book really if I wanted to just overshoot because yes, 354, but I also had to include the meetings, right? The meetings were 250. So I couldn't do one meeting and a half because I wasn't going to get paid half. So I'd have to overshoot by really almost double that, but making it two meetings a day. So if each meeting is $250 and I wanted to make 354, I needed to really safely book two because realistically, maybe one or two or three of those meetings would not go through during the week. So I had to overshoot. So I had two meetings that I had to book every single day. Right. So now that I figured out that I had to book two meetings, that was the action I had to take or that was the result for each day. That's where you have to get to. You have to get so minute to where you get to the results per day. So once I figured that out, then I actually understood that to get a meeting, how many calls did I have to do? So it takes a little bit of time to figure out how much, but you can do statistics, right? If I did 100 dials, I could probably book about two meetings if I did 100 dials or if I did 150 dials. That's what I did. I did 150 dials a day cold calls, right? Cold emails as well. I did about 100 cold emails to book two meetings a day. That was the volume that I had to put in place. So I did this every single day. Some days I would book four meetings. Some days I would book one meeting. Some days I would book two meetings. But overall, I was consistently booking two meetings a day on average, right? This is when I was on the street. So I kept hitting this goal to the point where I finally got to the point where I did actually hit that $85,000 mark. But that was because I consistently did 150 cold calls, 100 emails every single day. I was one of the top people when it came to volume. I always made sure that my volume was on point. I always dialed people. I always talked to people. And I always tried to book as many qualified meetings as humanly possible. So that was the step that I took to get to that point. So how does this relate to you? This relates to you because any goal that you have, all you have to do is figure out how long is it going to take to get to that goal. What are the consistent actions that you need to do on a smaller time frame? So if let's say your goals are in a year, because most people have yearly or annual goals, you want to split that up into quarters, right? How many, how many quarters, how, ma how much, let's say it's money, right? Let's say it's $100,000 a year. That's an easy number to get to, or actually no, $120,000 a year. You want to make $120,000 a year, right? You have to figure out, well, I need to make $10,000 per month or for, let me do the math right quick. $30,000 a quarter because there's four quarters in a year. Four times three is 12, right? Which is 120,000 if you multiply that by 10. So, wait, no, multiply that by, <laughs> I'll do the math so wrong. But you get the point, right? You get the point. You need $30,000 every quarter. Um, Cause yeah, 30,000 times four is 120,000, perfect. So then when you split that up, you wanna get that down to 100, you wanna get that down to like, okay, now it's every month, what does that look like? Well, that's gonna be $10,000 a month, okay? Now divide that by four. This is gonna be a little bit harder, right? Because now you have to figure out how much money do you need to make per week to get to that point. You see how I'm working backwards. I'm working down to the minute detail of the daily tasks that you have to do. And if you wanna get real maniacal about this, you can actually figure out the, the hourly tasks that you need to do to get the daily tasks. That's gonna be even better. Now you're really in control of the outcome because you're able to work backwards and understand what the inputs are. That's where most people fail. They don't even know what inputs they need to do. They just arbitrarily have a goal and they hope that one day the, the sky is gonna open up and the goal is just gonna fall in their lap and they're just going to like just, just go crazy. That's not how life works. You have to premeditate almost everything and luck will play a part of it to make sure that you achieve that goal, but you have to put yourself in position with luck. And that means that you have to put in as much action as humanly possible that you need to do to be able to achieve that goal. So back to it, right? So you have $10,000 a month. You split that down by a week. Let's do 10,000 divided by four, right? I love doing this with money because it's a lot easier and all of you guys want to make money. So it makes sense. So divide that by four. You have $2,500 a week that you have to make, right? $2,500 a week. Now you want to divide that by seven if you're going to work seven days out of the week. You need to make three hundred and fifty. Eight dollars a day. 
to get to $120,000 a year. Now you have to figure out how you're gonna do it. What are you gonna use to be able to accomplish this? What's the mechanism? What is the, what is the way that you're going to make this money? Is it going to be e-commerce? Are you gonna be selling merchandise? Are you gonna be selling products? Are you gonna be selling info products? How many sales do you have to do? Let's say you wanna sell a, a $50 product, right? So that means 358 divided by, what did we say? $50 product, right? You have to sell eight products safely. I rounded 7.14 up to eight because we always want to round up. We want to overshoot. So that way, if we have one day where we miss, we still hit the average. So you would have to sell eight of these products a day. How are you going to sell these products? Are you going to run ads? Or are you going to reach out to people hand to hand? Let's say you're going to reach out to people hand to hand. How many people do you need to reach out to to get a sale? This is where you have to figure out statistics. If you reach out to 100 people and you get one sale, then you know that you need seven of these. So you're going to have to reach out to 700 people every single day to get that sale. That's hand to hand. If you run paid ads, you can figure out the statistics. If I put in $20 or can, if I put in $100, can I make $358 in sales? Can I make $400 in sales? So now you have to figure out the skill set. Every single day you're going to be running ads. So you see how you work backwards. This is a long, long elaborated way of saying you need to work backwards every single time from your goals to, so that you don't get frustrated, so you don't get mad, so you don't seem like the, the idiot that makes all these lofty goals and you actually have no plan to do it. See, the greatest men on the planet have plans. They plan everything. And that doesn't mean that the plans are going to work, but that just means that they have enough plans to know that they are consistently going forward in their goals. They're not staying stagnant, which means you're moving backwards. I've mentioned this before. So take this as the science of actually how to goal set, how to actually figure out what the inputs need to be, how to figure out if the outputs are even feasible for your situation, if you can actually achieve those actions that you want to take place. This is what's going to help you a lot. This is what's going to help you actually be able to level up every single year and hit the goals that you have for New Year's if you do that. You really shouldn't do that. You should always have goals. Your goals should never restart for the new year. They should be a continuation, right? The most successful entrepreneurs, the most successful men, they always have their goals on basically repeat or they have their goals just rolling over. There is no like reset of the new year, new year's resolutions that doesn't exist for us. All we do is we set goals every single day, every single month, every single year consistently, right? So I hope this helped you. Um, like, comment, subscribe, of course. Tap into the link in the description if you want to build your personal brand. We do a lot of goal setting as well to figure out, okay, how many subscribers do you want? How many videos you have to put out, et cetera, et cetera. I go through the same process with all the guys that I work with. Um, right now, I'm currently transparently sitting at six guys right now. Um, I have four more spots left that I'm opening up um, to help. YouTube is a really big opportunity to build a personal brand that can pay you forever for being yourself. You're already literally... Uh, having to pay to live, you might as well get paid to live as well. That makes the most sense, right? So link is in the description, one-on-one -on -one consultation. If you want to join Training Grounds, that's the group that I have that basically we work on personal branding. We work on figuring out how to convert with the videos that you make, authentic videos that don't take you that much time, and the members are seeing progress as well. Um, from there, sign up to the free newsletter. You can actually get access to all my different brain dumps that I do almost sporadically. Whenever I have something in insightful to say, it'll be in your inbox. You also get a lot of different deals, different discounts that I'm doing for the programs that I'm putting out. So that was my um, advertisement, but I appreciate y'all. Catch you on the next video. Conquer the world, conquer your life, conquer yourself. I will see you next time.